Aw, oh, who's a good little raccoon? You eat that fish. Oh hey everyone, Fear Crawler here. Welcome to the video. Oh hey, aren't you supposed to be wearing a mask if you're closer than six feet to me? But I am wearing a mask. No, 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 no. One of these. This is a mask? Yeah. It looks more like a slingshot. I'll be right back. I think I just killed somebody. Enjoy the video. We're not really certain where the virus came from, or when exactly it first started to spread here. At this point, I honestly don't think it makes much of a difference. It spread so deep into the population here that trying to track down patient zero would be nearly impossible. In the last six months, there have been more than one million deaths in this city alone, with millions more affected. Those are just rough estimates. With most people being asymptomatic for several weeks after infection, it's quite difficult to estimate just how many here are infected with the virus. The hospitals and clinics became overcrowded within the first few weeks, though we noticed an abnormally high volume of people exhibiting flu-like symptoms that weren't responding to normal treatment. It all seemed to start with a cough that didn't get better with over-the-counter medicines. The cough would progress with chills, nausea, and a low-grade fever for more than 10 days. By the time the infection was in full swing, the infected would practically be on their deathbeds. Some would pull through. Some didn't. We had never seen anything quite like this before, and naturally, the concern was on the rise. Concern grew into fear. Fear grew into panic. And the panic grew into complete and utter chaos. A stay-at-home order was issued in an attempt to contain the virus. People began to stock up on everything from canned foods to firearms, anything to fortify their homes with all the food and protection their wallets could afford them. When the store's supplies dwindled from the delays in the shipments, people began looting the warehouses. When those supplies ran dry, they began to steal from each other. By day 45, the city was in a full lockdown. This did little to prevent people from taking to the streets and taking their panic and paranoia out on the city. Something as simple and innocent as a small cough was enough to get you assaulted or worse. As people began breaking off into factions, it wasn't uncommon to see people being pulled from their vehicles and beaten with hammers and tire irons by groups of angry citizens, simply because one of them was seen blowing their nose. By day 60, the city was literally on fire. The police were evacuated due to the rise of martial law. Even if they had stayed, they were greatly outnumbered. There was no way for them to regain the city. The gangs began to murder indiscriminately, beating people into a bloody pulp and then burning their bodies to ash inside stacks of tires like a makeshift crematorium. The stench was indescribable. It took over 90 days for the mayor to release a statement about the status of the virus and what, if anything, could be done. Given the full lockdown of the city, including all radio and television stations, the live broadcast signal was of extremely poor quality. I'm not really sure if anyone else was listening at this point anyway, but I listened. It all sounded so simple. Had this information been coming from anyone else, I wouldn't have even taken it seriously. There were three rules to follow to avoid infection. Rule one, keep your hands clean, wash them often, disinfect them after everything you touch, Rule two, keep your distance from others. Stay as far away as you can, even outdoors. Rule three, and this is the most important one, wear a face mask. 
You need a new one each day. Discard the used one in a trash receptacle to prevent the virus from spreading. The first time I went outside wearing a face mask, I didn't see anyone else wearing one. Like I said, the broadcast was very low quality, and if anyone else was watching it, it's possible that they either missed that part, or they simply did not care. People were staring and pointing at me, but they did keep their distance, which was rule number two anyway. I made sure to keep my hands clean and disinfected throughout the day. At the end of the day, my face mask went into the trash receptacle, and at the start of the following day, I would put on a fresh face mask and go about my routines. Wearing the face mask wasn't comfortable. It had a very unpleasant smell to it, and I'd have to constantly adjust it just to stop it from sliding off. But those are simply small nuisances to contend with, all for the sake of keeping the virus out of my body. Over these last few weeks, there's been a small group of people that have followed my footsteps. There are about 11 of us right now. We all follow the same routines, and so far, none of us have been infected. We all wash our hands often. We all make sure that when we walk together, we keep a good distance between ourselves. And we all make sure to wear a fresh face mask each time we go out amongst the population. We do get stared at, but so far, none of us have been attacked during these riots. Maybe it's because our faces are covered. I'm just about to go out again and start my day. I just need to get a new face mask before I go. This is the only part of the prevention protocol that I really don't like, but I can't risk becoming infected. Who would have thought that something like wearing someone else's face as a mask would work to prevent getting infected? I don't question the science. Just hold still while I cut. That's better. You never do get used to the smell. I can't believe I killed our neighbor. It's okay, we can always get another one. Really? Thanks, Mini Crawler. You always make me feel better. Until next time, everyone, take care, be safe, and above all, stay, stay scared. scared.